In the past few videos, we learned about the usage of React Memo. Although it is an API used to optimize the rendering behavior, you could also end up using it in incorrect situations where it's not really going to help. Let's take a look at those situations with an example. In this video, I'm going to show an incorrect memoization with children props. First, let's set up the components needed for this example. In the components folder, I'm going to create a new folder called incorrect optimization. Within this folder, I'm going to create two new files, parent3.js and child3.js. To speed things up, I'm going to copy the code from parent2 into parent3 and from child2 into child3. Now let's make the modifications. First in child3.js, I'm going to change all occurrences of child2 to child3. Then in parent3.js, change all occurrences of parent2 to parent3. Also, change child2 to child3. Now this is the basic React memo example we had seen two videos earlier. Let's make sure it still works as expected. In app.js, I'm going to include parent3 component and head to the browser. On page load, we have the log messages from the initial render of both the components. If I clear the console and click on the name button, both the components re-render and this is the expected behavior because name is passed down as a prop to the child component. If I clear the console and click on the count button, only the parent component re-renders. The child component does not re-render because it is wrapped with react.memo. So everything is working as expected. Now let's go through a scenario where react.memo is incorrectly used. A lot of the times we tend to have components nested at various levels. So let's say our child3 component in the parent component also has another child. So instead of the self-closing tag, we are going to have opening and closing tags. And for now, let's add a simple hello text as its children. Next, in child3 component, I will destructure children and name from props and include it in the JSX. So this is going to be children followed by name. Let me format this, save the file and head to the browser. Now you can see that we have hello Vishwas, which corresponds to the JSX in the child3 component. Let's observe memoization now. I'm going to clear the console and click on change name in both the parent and child components re-render. I'm going to clear the console and click on the count button and only the parent re-renders. So the memoization still works fine if you're passing in a text node. If you've been developing React apps for a while now, you'll realize that children components are often other HTML elements or custom components and not plain text nodes. So I'm going to wrap this hello text with a strong HTML tag. So strong and then formatted. So we have the child component and as its children, we have a strong HTML tag with text inside it. Let's save the file, head to the browser, and now observe the memoization behavior. 
We're going to clear the console and click on change name and both the components we render. We're going to clear the console again and click on the count button. To our surprise, we see that both the components we render. Even though the name value did not change, the child component re-rendered. This is because of the children props. In React, props.children is always a new reference which will cause the child component to always render. So the takeaway from this video is that there is no need to wrap your child component with React Memo if the child component itself has children elements as we see here in this case. The incorrect memo will simply add to your component render time as new references to the children props will always cause the memoized child component to re-render. In the next video, let's take a look at another scenario where we might incorrectly use React Memo.